Uh, kind of two videos back to back here. Um, so if you watch the last one, still the same guy, still the same shave. Last night was New Year's. Um, anyway, what we're doing today, I'm building my own fermentation chamber. Um, seen a few plans online. I didn't want a big box to roll around. I actually have a room here. Uh, it's my music multi-purpose sort of guest room, a little bit of everything room. But there's, it's quite long, and I have room in here to permanently place this said fermentation chamber. Um, so what I have, I uh, went out and I found myself on local classifieds a very decently priced older mini fridge. Um, this is going to be a bit of a moving segment today. So. As you can see, I'm sort of looking around this guy. Um, there was a door on it, a couple screws on the top, a couple screws on the bottom. But it was just big enough. I got it for 30 bucks. And, well, you're going to see over, over time, I am a budget brewer. So, my initial plan was to just kind of take it off. I take off the, the door. Had a space in my home brewery back there in the corner, aka the laundry room. But when I sized it up, when this fridge went into place, um, there was no real way to seal around it to keep the heat in, and there was no room there to have an opening for to get the fermenters in there. Because I wanted to to build it to at least have the room to do three uh, fermenters in it if I ever needed to, or my smaller test containers, like you guys have seen in past videos. If anyone ends up going back through those. But anyway, long story short, didn't work. So the plan is right here. Um, let's see if I can spin this around. No, I can't. Okay, all right, we're going to turn it. The plan is right here. The fridge is going to permanently be seated in this corner. A.K.A. right there. Got lots of room. Lots and lots of room. I haven't measured out that I'm going to have this space accounted for here and build up a little block underneath for to support any fermenters that might end up having to sit in this fridge. I originally wanted to take this down. I don't know if you can see my hand. If you buy one of these mini fridges, um, you may not believe it or not, but if you're looking around the back corner, that little tube back there is your Freon. And that actually loops in through, see these ridges? There's a little Freon tube to go through there, and that's your sole cooling for this particular kind of fridge. It's apparently quite common. I did a little bit of reading. But you have a couple options. You can beat that down, but if you try to cut that and crimp it, unless you have professional to tools and know what you're really doing, I don't, first to admit. I was nervous, so I decided to leave that there. Um, if you can see inside most of these fridges, there's going to be a little ledge. That's where your compressor and other doodads are for the actually do the power for this guy. Older compressors, a lot of times, is a job to kill them. So I was quite happy when I found this old fridge for like 30 bucks, and I know it works because I tried it. Hopefully, with a well-insulated box, which I'm going to be building, um, and it's not going to really be cutting in a whole lot. But all I'm going to do is I'm going to have this measured to give me a bit of half inch in between, potentially three buckets, which I'll, I'm never going to have three buckets going. But I might have some small boxes or small containers, maybe three gallon splits, things like that. So I'd like to have a little room. I'm going to measure it out to, so that my Finished box should come out to somewhere around here. I, just, I got it marked down with my math. I'm saying it's going to be 34 to 11 sixteenths. Fancy, huh? But with that, I'm going to have my box framed out. Don't know if I'm going to rip some 2 by 4 but whatever I do, I'll put it into the next segment. I'm, I'm going to rip it in half just to have a small frame instead of big bulky 2 by 4 Have all that here from renovations. Constant state of renovations in my home. Anyway, when I get my frame up and in place, I also have some leftover paneling that I changed from upstairs. 
may not be this color, but fancy dancy paneling that came out of this house that I was looking for a purpose for. You never know, right? So I'm going to rip that. That's going to be my outside casing. I also have some two inch blue styrofoam. That's going to be the insulating for this. And for regards of the controller, I have a Inkbird controller. I'll, I'll get you the model after. My brain is not working. It's New Year's Day. Um, my heating source. I will be using a, a ceramic heating lamp that I have. I'm going to put it in the corner and eventually I'm going to find a little fan just to help circulate the air and have this pretty st pretty uniform. Um, not sure where I'm going to mount the uh, said controller, but wherever it's going to be mounted, it's going to be permanent. So I might try to take a bit of time with that. It might be just uh, bare bones, get it working kind of thing to start with. Might be a future project. And if you're building one of these and using your controllers, just to go back into it, um, your main concern is the temperature of your wart, not the surrounding air. So if you put a temperature probe into the suspended wart, you can do that. Um, there's probes that are designed for that particular purpose, but mine are just these little dangling thermocouples you can put wherever you want. I'm going to just get a little bit of foam, some sort of insulation, and tape it to whatever fermenter I'm going to be using at any given time. And just have it as a totally close to the outside of the fermenter as it can be. And then insulate the outside so that it's pretty darn close to what the, the wart temperature is, which is what you're concerned with for regards to controlling your temperature. I've got a two-stage switch, so it's going to turn on the fridge when the wart's too warm. And it's going to turn on the heat element when the wart's too cold. And that's it. Um, you control your temperature to just make sure that the yeast is where it likes to be for regards of fermentation. But if you also, if you want to play with going over temperature and stressing it, yeast does interesting things like providing esters which come, to, come across on your nose. Sometimes they do cool things with the flavor more mouthfeel, etc, etc, but it, it's just another thing I can play with. So we're building a toy here today, people. Anyway, uh, I will keep you guys posted, and this may be a little bit longer than usual. I'll put one more part to the video when I get further along, let you know what I did. Okay, but Take two. Um, this is going to be probably a two-part video. Um, this is just going to be the wood build, and maybe get into the insulation. Um, just how I get my measurements, so it might help people. I'm hoping to uh, get about a half inch extra space alongside each fermenter. Um, this particular fridge, which I'd assume is the same as anything you might come up on classified, had a little casing on the thermostat, which impeded the fermenter. So I took that off, a couple screws. And the knob also was rubbing against it. So I just have to set up as full on cool. <laughs> um, anyway, so this is allowing the fermenter to fit into that bottom step. So to get my distance, now that the fermenter fits in there, no trouble. I'm going to build a little base here so that it's not going to fall when, it, when it's in there. Um, I have this in place and I have my foot on it to get it approximately to where it needs to be and I have a straight edge again more salvage stuff so put your straight edge across the front of your fridge if you can see that and grab your tape and measure from the edge of that to whatever edge of whatever fermenter you think is going to be sitting in this thing so for me that ended up being about five inches exactly so that's in, taken into account for my fermenters. Um, I know I'm probably never going to have three big brew buckets going just for regards to my brewing style. You may have more, so I build this to whatever your size is. But I'm building it to house three of these buckets. So I have space for putting my little test containers there, unimpeded, and maybe a couple three-gallon fermenters if I do splits in the future. Just like to have room, right? So my math... Uh, I'm going by the brew bucket size. Uh, my brew bucket, which may be different than yours, is a 14 
inches in, like total width with the top because the top's going to be your widest point. So I'm adding on an extra half inch for that. And for my build, which doesn't have to be your build, I am going with 5 inches plus 29, so 34 and a half total distance. Um, one thing I'm going to have to be weary of uh, is the insulation along the wall. Uh, I may end up just insulating along the top and hoping for the best against the wall for regards to my particular build. If you're doing a similar thing in a house, you probably are going to have insulation in that wall anyway. I hear people. There's always people. All right, so I may end up just putting insulation along the top part where it won't be interfering with my fermenters and heat hangs up high. Put a fan in there. Should do the job for regards of what I want. But I'm going to be putting a little strip of insulation I have. I have some pipe insulation I'm going to tape along here. I put a mark along that wall along where this is going to be sitting. Have it in as far as I can get in because I want to take up as less real estate as I can. So I'm going to staple on some insulation along this wall and I have some 2x4 ripped now. Um, it's not perfectly in the middle but it doesn't really matter. It's not going to be very much weight on this, it's just a framing. So, um, On the bottom of the 2x4 along the top I'm going to have the same thing, some pipe insulation that I have there. And I'm going to have it along this edge and I have a little strip that's left over from the ripping just for regards to the distance I chose. I'm going to use that on the bottom and put more pipe insulation. So this will be totally sealed along this edge. Um, when I screw this stuff together, I'm going to come in along with a drill because it's ripped 2x4. It's probably going to split. And I'm just going to drill it up so it's going to be like a toe screw. I don't know if anyone's familiar with that term. It's just how we describe it. You, when, you screw, when you screw something on an angle, look at my fancy drill here screw on an angle what you're doing is you're going to have your screw go up and take a hold of the piece of wood and it's going to pull itself towards that piece of wood so if you could visualize that what i'm hoping is going to happen um it's going to be just a tight seal uh that's never going to move again that's why i place this in as far as i could and wherever this fridge is sitting that's going to be it so uh i may do a video in a bit after i figure out the math and measurements and I get so much framing done, marks on the wall, etc. So wish me luck. Okay. Um, a couple little issues when I was doing it. I realized that I had two inch insulation, which I mentioned, so I started to go and I used some of my rip lumber and I put a little strip along the inside. Um, this particular lip here is only one inch, so my fermentation chamber is going to sit out with enough space there for it to be able to uh, have the two inch in like foam insulation here without it impeding any fermenters I put in here. That's the hope. Um, what I've done is, I know it's a little bit of motley on top, I'm going to fix it up with a little little shim here, a little shim there, and when I sheet this puppy in, never to be seen again. Um, but after I fix this to the wall, um, there was no stud in behind this particular section, but this is not going to be a load bearing type job. Um, so I just got three screws, which I drilled through the piece and drilled directly into the paneling. I didn't give it too much power because that'll pop the paneling. Your screw won't have any hole. So. That's in place in the in a, with a line that I marked along the front face of the fridge. Now, why I did that is because old houses, they, nothing's usually square. So, where this was going to sit on the floor, I just made it as close to an approximation of where I wanted it to be. Uh, and I just drew a line along the side of the fridge. That was my line for the inside strip, which everything's going to be based off of. But, with all that said, like a, it's not going to be a perfect box. I just need this to work. Um, I had some leftover pipe insulation from my chiller project. Um, the pipe that I had, I had to strip. So I was initially going to use screws for the attach this. 
and it didn't work. I uh, pulled right through the stuff. So I just used plain old staples, stapled it along, and basically after I did that toe screw trick, which you can see here, came down at an angle, and I came up at an angle, and pulled the top section tight. Only trouble was, uh, it left the bottom not being attached, really. I had a, a strip I had put underneath the front of the fridge, right here underneath, in behind this. I'll explain this in a second. But that strip was what I wanted, but there was no real way to screw into it without a splitting. So I had that in place. Uh, this was free floating and out to its side. So I had to figure out how to get it attached that it shouldn't move ever again when I get this set up. So I grabbed my handy dandy C-clamp. I affixed it to the front here and I kept pressure on the top corner. A lot of things on the go there. Uh, now, w once I had the C clamp in and the insulation compressor wasn't that bad, um, I just took a piece of wood that I half assly measured to the height that I wanted here for my fermentation bucket and I used that. If you can see, I got two screws here in the corner. I put two screws so that it wouldn't be pivoting. And it's sort of a bit of strength to it. And I did the same thing on the other side. I screwed or drilled two, pre-drilled two holes where I would would have hoped for it to line up. And after I used the C-clamp, I lined the front. And I had a couple screws here ready to go. I just screwed into this piece so now it should be forever held in the position that I want and all I really have is a little tiny gap right here and I can fill that in I'm pretty pleased with how this has turned out there should be no air escape and it's the basis for my chamber okay uh, moving on good morning uh, shut it down a bit early yesterday it's just a own project so it's just slow paced I'm sure everyone doesn't do everything in a day um, yesterday was pretty productive the the hardest part was design um, I'm not sure if I got a good picture of it earlier so I'll try to do my best for it to get you a good shot there now alright so here's the general frame uh, we got our good seal around the fridge which was the main part uh, you can do it whatever way you wish the great thing if you could see the uh, brace I put along the bottom uh, is actually supporting the fermenter really well. Um, I'm not going to have to build any more additional uh, space or take up any additional space there for regards of anything I want to put in the fridge for it to be closer to the cooling and well just space and stuff. So that's a plus. Um, so it may work for you guys as well. But I just ripped a piece to the height that I need it and I screwed it in with two screws on either side so it was not moving it's attached to the wall bingo bango got a great seal uh, time will tell if it's gonna work and I uh, got lots of room along the wall there uh, and along that area oh my god this is hurt on the brain yeah in in there yeah <laughs> for any uh, star phone want to put along the wall um, think um this is just me hoping i got lots of insulation but if not i may just need to make some cuts here and there and i'll show you where my choices were and why they were um but as you can see i should have lots of room in this baby for lots of different fermentation foam next step i got to build a door um just going to be a square to be fitting tight along here for me i decided to go with an 18 inch door um I had it for a little bit over 14 because my fermenter at the moment is 14 inches in diameter. Um, so it would have fit fine. But a friend of mine just brought up the point that if I ever bought another one, uh, it may be bigger. His is 18 inches. Uh, and well, so I made the door 18 and an eighth just so I account for any future fermenters. But anyways, I'm going to build a door to fit snugly into that. So it's just basically a... a a square frame is going to fit into this hole opening which I took my time and hopefully it's very square 
so it should be a pretty easy door to make. It's just going to be another frame to go inside. And I'm going to cut my piece of ply. Well, I'm using panel board, but you can use plywood. Uh, I use cut my. Yeah, notice my nice nail. Yeah, ask about that if you want. Um, I'm going to cut my piece of plywood or panel board to lay about halfway on this stud here. Uh, the reason for that, uh, when I put the plywood on, or the panel board, keep on saying that, along the outside edges here, I need to sort of like doing drywall. You need to have at least something for it to be attached to. So if I do it halfway, I've got enough room to put a piece right here for the case this side in. And I'm going to be doing insulation after the fact, uh, after I get the paneling on, because I'd like to be able to screw down into the paneling, have some sort of adhesive. I think I'm just going to use caulking. Um, caulking. I've done a lot of demo and it holds pretty darn good once it's set up. So a little bit of caulking on the back of my blue insulation. Screw it down to the panel board. Make sure I don't put too much pressure on it to pop the blue. And over time this thing should be pretty or stand up to the test of time. The only thing I gotta figure out, and if I come up with an idea, it would be in the next section. Um, I'm hoping to put my heating element along this area here where the fermenter is. Most times I'm going to have my fermenters down on this end. And being a closed cell, like the heat from over here should should be adequate. Because uh, it's just a closed situation. It should, should hardly ever be on, to be honest. But I will keep, it, keep tabs on that and let you guys know how this works. Because it's kind of making it as I go here. Anyway, I'm going to get to it. I'm going to try to get that door built and get some plywood ripped and I'll see where the next video goes. But right now it's just progress. Alright. Alright, well that was a close one. Um, it's a snowstorm here and my panel board stored in my back shed so I had to have it. Me wanting to get this done. And panel board becomes a kite in the wind apparently. That was fun. Um, what we have on to go. Alright, so I was left with a little bit of a dilemma. Um, real estate in this guy is going to be a lot for fermenters, but for regards of building, I didn't want to take up too much for regards of having solid materials to mount to. So my ceramic heat lamp, the plan is now to have it attached to this block I just put here. Um, it's a 2 by 6 block that I, I had. And I built my door. Um, if you hang on one second, I'll put you down and show you how snug this is going to be. Because you want snug. Alright. So that little square you see here, I'm going to cover that with my panel board in a bit. Yours can be plywood or whatever. Panel board's kind of thin, so I think it's going to work out pretty good for me. Um, you can notice that I marked a line along here, along here, and along here. Um, the board I ripped, I ripped it to an inch and a half just to make it easy for the math and stuff for me because I'm not that bright. And um, half of inch and a half, three quarters. So I got a three quarter perimeter I'm going to put along here. And that's what I'm going to take the measurements for from my plywood or from my panel board. I also did three quarters along the top and along the bottom doesn't matter. It's going to go down close to the ground. I don't want it totally snug to the ground, but so I'll just probably take off about an eighth of an inch for that, I hope. And when I come in, I'm going to actually screw this to the frame in place so that it's going to be made to fit. Like it has no other choice. It's going to be exactly what I want it to be. And if I go by these lines that I marked here, these fancy lines. Uh, everything should look half, half decent anyway. So, wish me luck. Gonna move on. No more outside today. Alright, bye. Um, things are going along pretty good here. Uh, what we have done... Hang on, I'll try to be as steady as I can. Not the prettiest thing in the world, but this is something for a purpose. And honestly, this is only costing me... $30 for a fridge I found. So, let's see. Um, the door frame looked pretty good. One with a little square here. Um, as I stated before, there's a 2x6 in behind here. Well, I ripped it down for the fit 
what I figured would be a good size. That's there for mounting anything I want to mount inside. Um, be it the uh, little ceramic heater that I got. I'm going to have the proper holder. I'm going to keep it away from the top. So hopefully we should be okay. And I am going to watch this very carefully the first little bit just to make sure. Um, so that's all going to be mounted here. I cased in the whole sides. Uh, the door fit pretty well. A couple old door handles that I had here in my hardware store I have. That I call my old uh, fixer upper house. And this came off of the porch upstairs. So you don't always have to spend a whole lot of money. Uh, if you do go out and buy a piece of plywood or whatever it is, you can use pretty well even uh, malamine, um, particle board. Anything like that will work. Cheap as you can go. It, this was only one sheet of uh, panel board. So that's a 4x8 uh, sheet. And I managed to get enough pieces to finish off the casing in section for today. Um, I did leave the top off. So I built to uh, easy, easier, easily <laughs> do the blue star foam along the wall to 2 inch which will be part of the other video plus the wiring in the next one I think but as you can see I'm gonna have a lot of room in this guy I hope this works it's looking pretty good I'm pretty confident with this so not buttoning up the top today this will be it for today's progress uh, might as well put it as one video so if you are interested in the rest I'm gonna try to Get my head into the wiring game and wire a uh, little little controller. I'll show you that tomorrow. Uh, provided by the great people at Inkbird. Thank you, Humenzu. Uh, anyways, we will see you guys soon. And best of luck with everything you're trying to do.